There's a big problem when it comes to blogs inside of Elementor, and we're gonna solve that problem inside of this video. The issue is we have no control over styling the content inside of Elementor. We have full creative freedom on how we build our blog post template. We can create our page any way that we like, but when it comes to the actual content, the most important part of the blog post, we are severely limited. But don't worry, I got you covered. In fact, I got a free template as well I'm gonna share with you, and I'm gonna show you how I use this template and how you can too on all of your projects that have blogs. It's going to save you a whole lot of time and it's going to make everything so much easier. And most importantly, your blog posts are going to be coming out looking so much better. All right, let's check it out. I created this blog here. We'll see it in the front end and Hey, the banner looks pretty nice, the table of contents, but as soon as we get to the content, well, it looks not good at all. There's no spacing. The sizes are all off. There's just no breathing room around anything. A lot of weird things are happening with the images. Now, we could do a couple of things. One is we could go inside the actual Gutenberg editor and start trying to style things inside here, like adding border radiuses on the images. That's time consuming. If we're giving this to a client and setting it up for the client, we just want them to write their content, copy and paste it in here, and have the template set up ready to go. The other option is going back inside of our template into our site settings, and then styling up our theme styles. We can do this. You can style up your header text right here. You can create your sizes for your header text, your, your colors. You could also style up the images and even put your border radiuses here. But the problem with this is it's going to conflict with the rest of your site. Maybe you want your blog to look a certain way. You want your header tags to be a certain size on your blog, but you don't want that to conflict with the rest of your site. And this is the problem with blog posts in Elementor. But the solution that I found is just having a really easy to use CSS snippet. I have one right here. There is a link inside the description of the video. It's gonna take you to my blog. And inside this blog, we're going to use this snippet right here. Go ahead and copy and paste it. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. As soon as we paste it in and add a class, there's gonna be a huge difference in the blog post. We're gonna to go to the post content widget this dynamically pulls all the content from the blog post. You're gonna to go to the advanced and right here in the CSS classes, you're gonna give it a class called post content. Let's go ahead and publish this and save it. Now let's go over to our blog post. Go to an actual blog post. You wanna see the content because we're going to do this inside of the customizer first. We're gonna take this CSS snippet from my blog here the template, and by the way, I use this template on all of our projects. I have been using this for years now, and it's made the process a whole lot easier. Okay, we're just gonna paste it in, and right off the bat, you're gonna see the content update. Not only are you gonna see the font styles update, but you're gonna see all the spacing as well go into effect. This is gonna make the blog post so much easier to read. Not only do we have proper styling for the different header tags and the actual content, but we have all the spacing and we got full control. And I'm gonna show you how to control all of this inside the CSS template. We also fix a lot of default errors that are just inside of WordPress in general with styles like margins that really aren't needed. Everything has been fixed inside of this snippet. We have elements like blog quotes. We have elements like number list and bullet list and even code blocks. So all of the most used elements inside of a blog post have had their style set up. Before we go into this, let's go back because there are a couple things that we do need to do to our post content widget for the styling. Let's make sure we are in the post content widget and let's give it a width. I want to keep it narrow. And that is because when people are reading blogs, well, their eyes traveling the full length of the page is really hard. It strains the eye. So we want to keep it narrow. I'm going to change this to custom, put it on pixels. And the max I always have my content is at 800 pixels. 
The next thing we're going to do is over here in the style. And you see, we don't have much we could do in style. We got a few options. This is where the problem lies. Okay, we could align it to the left, which it is done automatically. Let's go ahead and give it a text color. So make sure you're using your globals. And then in your typography, let's make sure you're using your regular text that you would use, the style for your regular text. So I'm going to do my text medium. Let's go ahead and publish this. Go to the front end with our customizer. Let's refresh this. And out the box now, we are good to go. This is already built in a way where it is set up with all best design practices for blog posts to be ready to go. All the elements that are needing styling are already styled. We have our styling in our images. We have styling inside of our block quotes, in our bullet list, in our number list, even our code blocks. And then up here as well, let me see. Okay, we also got our links style too. So it's good to go out the box, but you might want to make some changes and have some more creative freedom. And that's the whole point of this video is to give you creative freedom. So let's walk through this CSS snippet. And even if you don't know CSS, follow along because you'll be able to make the changes that you need. It has been built in a way that is easy to follow. First off, we're going to look at the headers. Now, the headers, they have spacing on the top and bottom. And the reason why I have spacing on the top is because, well, if you look at two paragraphs, this has a spacing in the paragraph, but every header is going to have more space between that paragraph because it's breaking up the sections. And that is why we have the padding top. So if you want more spacing, just add more padding top. Maybe I want to give it 3.5 rem or 4.5 rem, however much you feel is needed. This is the first thing you're going to want to change. Now, the padding bottom, I would leave it as it is. It's pretty much good to go. The font weight, you might want to change. Maybe you don't want it bold. Maybe you want it semi-bold or maybe you want it extra bold. It's totally up to you. Next up, we are going to control the font size for our H2s and then our font size for our other H tags. Now, in blogs, you really should only use an H2 followed by H3s. I always leave out H4s, 5s, and 6s. They really don't help out blogs. They're not great for SEO. And, well, it just kind of makes things a little bit confusing. Keep it simple. H2 followed by H3. Your H2 is going to be a little bit bigger. And then your H3s are going to be a little bit smaller. But just in case, if you do want to use an H4, H5, or H6, this is also foolproof. It's going to cover you. But we are going to keep all those the same size. So you can control your sizes here. Maybe you want your H2 to be bigger. Well, you could increase the size right here. And then same thing for your H3s and other H tags. You might want to make these ones smaller. And that actually looks really good like that. Next up, we're going to look at our paragraphs. So our paragraphs are already styled with colors with the font family. So not much is needed with our paragraphs, only spacing. And that's what we did. We got a uh, padding on the bottom. If you want more space in between your paragraphs, you're just going to increase this. Like I could take this to a 2.5, 2.25 rim. And you see it just increases the sizes between your paragraphs. Super easy. Leave these two alone. Don't change them. The only thing you're going to change in this is your padding bottom. Next up are the links, and this is something you are going to want to edit. You're going to want to make sure you have your color links. So your only thing you're going to change is the color. Put the right color code for the links that you want. You want them to pop and stand out. You might want to change the font weight. That is totally up to you. If you don't want an underline, just go ahead and delete this and the underline will go away. Leave the transition though, because this is going to make everything smooth when you hover over it. And then the next one is the hover color. Whatever you want it to change to, change the color code. Very simple and straightforward. Next up are going to be our bullet list. So let's scroll down here. The bullet list, I will leave. They're pretty much good to go out of the box. I never change this style on any of the blogs that I do. If anything, maybe you want to possibly reduce the size 
of the font. Maybe you want to make it not so font heavy, put a normal font weight on it. Other than that, it is good to go as it is. I like to let my bullet points kind of stand out a bit more because remember when people are reading blogs, they're skimming through it. You want to make it very skimmable. This setup does that. This top one, I skipped over it, but don't touch it. Leave it as it is. The only thing you're going to edit here is going to be your font size and font weight. Also, if you do want more padding on the bottom, more space, you can add more space. It's pretty much good to go as well, but if you maybe just want more breathing room, that is fine. And then right here for this snippet, this is going to control the space in between your list items. Maybe you want to spread these out a little bit more. I would not make them any tighter. You definitely want some breathing room, but you would do this with your margin bottom. So maybe I want to add a lot of space. I would take this to 2.25 RAM, which to me looks to be about a bit too much. Again, it's a sweet spot where it's at and good to go. Next up, we are going to focus on the images. And let's take a look at one. So we got our border radius. By default, there is no border radius on this. This is what it looks like without it, just very sharp. You want your border radiuses to be consistent throughout your website. So whatever you're using on your other pages for your images, use it here as well. And then the margins, I will leave this be. There are default margins that WordPress adds into the CSS. This is only to fix that extra margin that is not needed that we did not ask for. Next up is the blog quote. Here is our blog quote. The only thing you're going to want to change on it is the colors. That's what I would suggest. Maybe you want to add a bigger border. You could do that by changing the pixels on the border. I like things to be clean and, and slim, but it's totally up to you. Change the background color. Choose whatever you like for it. This is going to give you a little bit more of brand freedom. You can keep it aligned with your brand styles. And then you have your font size and your font weight. And then these next snippets right here, I would leave them just as they are. They're only removing some default styles that aren't needed. Then we have our code block right here. I do a lot of code blogs. So if you also do code blogs, I'm sure you already know how to edit all this. Uh, but you basically could control your background color and then the color of the actual code, which is pretty fun to do. And then finally, the last part right here, only for a mobile. This is just to control the font sizes. Maybe you want to reduce the size of your H2s for mobile. Maybe you want to make something a little bit bigger. It all depends on what you see on your phone. But there's no need to update or change spacing or adjust anything else besides your font sizes when it does come to mobile. And that is it, we're good to go. I mean, check it out. By default, with this code snippet, this is what we get. This is the layout, how it looks. And then just compare this to without it, the default styles. This is what we get. The code snippet is good to go. Once you have it all set up, go back over to your customizer, grab the content, go ahead and take it all, copy it, and then paste it wherever you are managing your CSS snippets. I got another video on that on where to put your CSS. I'll put a link to it somewhere up here. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And if you did find this video helpful, then don't forget that good YouTube stuff. You know what's up. The likes and subscribes. I do appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.